Good morning. Good to see everybody here. Nobody blew away last night. That's always a good thing. We hope nobody blows away today. But uh, who knows? Anything can happen the way it looks. Welcome to worship today. It is the second Sunday of Advent. And I'm glad that you're here. We've got just a few announcements that I want to lift up to you today. Uh, first of all, we've got youth group and choir meeting on the 8th. Youth group starts at 6, choir at 6.30. Uh, United Methodist Women is the week after on the 15th. We'll have confirmation class on the 22nd. We'll meet at the, back in the fellowship hall. And then, of course, coming up, we have the Christmas Eve program. Uh, candlelighting service and Christmas Eve program starts at 6. Uh, you will be invited to come and uh, be a part of the first rehearsal. That's the name of our Christmas program this year. And I think you'll enjoy yourselves because there's an awful lot of Christmas carols being sung. And that's a good thing. Um, don't forget we have our love baskets for Christmas Eve that we, uh, that we give out. And the, the canister is in the back with the little slips of paper. You can write down suggestions as to who you think should get a love basket this year. So please take time to do that and uh, look at that. And a reminder also to all of the uh, community care people, annual meeting day is rolling up on us, not too far away, down the location here. I know you've got a sticky note. He told me the other night, she put a sticky note on my desk, so I wouldn't forget. Good to have you. Thank you. But, but all, of our, um, all of the folks that are in charge of different committees and have different reports, please get those in as quickly as you can. I'd like them before the 19th, if we can do that. That gives me a little time before Christmas and a little time after Christmas to put it all together. And uh, the more time I have, the less stressful it becomes. So I would appreciate that. Um, also on the back of your insert, we have a reminder that the uh, Sunday School Christmas Giving Tree is children book, children's books, new and gently used for the Tree of Life. You can bring any uh, appropriate type children through preschool through teenagers and put them back under the tree in the fellowship hall. They don't need to be wrapped, do they, Jennifer? Oh, no, no wrapping. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I thought. But, yeah, you don't need to wrap those presents. Just bring books of any kind that are children books, children's books. If you're a, you know, a parent and you've got some that your kids have outgrown, bring them here. Grandparent, you don't know, ask one of the young people around here. They'll tell you what kind of books they like. And uh, bring them so we can bless the folks at the Tree of Life Ministry. Do we have any other announcements to share? Well, if everybody wants to come about 10 15 next Sunday, we'll do some Christmas carol thing. Yeah. So come a little early and we'll sing a few Christmas carols, like a first verse of some of the favorites. Thought we'd get into the holidays. Practice here. up for the Christmas Eve program. Right. Chris, pra practice for the Christmas program. What time again? 10 15. 10 15. Okay. So about 15 minutes before the service would start. 10 or, 10 or 12 minutes of carols, and, and then we'll start the program. What's that? Then I don't have to do Yeah, then she doesn't have to do a prayer week. It's a plan. Yeah, this was a plan. Good plan. And we all get to sing Christmas carols, which. You know, everybody likes to do, so please do that. Any other announcements? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Dylan turns 16 on Wednesday. Dylan does. It's also mm -hmm. Jack's birthday on Wednesday, too. Jack and Dylan, yeah. And Jack and Dylan's birthday is all skipped off, so we, we, we have to sing to them in an abstentia. I think that's what that means. They're absent. Uh oh. Birthday. Birthdays? <laughs> we got a pair of birthdays back there and they're both pointing at each other. Yeah. Betty and, Betty and Mana. The day after. Okay, not the same day, but no, real close. After <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jack and Dylan, Thursday, you said it was Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, so that 
leads off. So we got two and then one right after. Oh my gosh. We just need a couple more on either side and we can fill the whole week. All right, any anniversaries? All right, well, let's sing a little happy birthday to all four of our birthday boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Always our prayer, right? That we have many more. Well, let's call ourselves into our time of worship with the opening songs. We're going to start with like that piece, like a river. Please stand with me if you're able. Touch their heart. 
be seated. And we'll have our Advent candle lighting and reading. Fire burns, it hurts, it can destroy. Fire also gives warmth and light. The coming of Christ is both a day of judgment and a day of promise. Two candles flickering brightly help us remember that the coming of Christ has many meanings. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Light two candles, see them glow brightly so that all may know how two candles show the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Let's all pray. Dear God, we have much to do and we are not sure we will be ready for the day of your coming. In Advent's light, help us to see what is important to be who you want us to be, and to do what you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty. And so we go on to our opening, which is good as well. Stand with me, if you're able, as we sing together.
Children want to come up? Come on up, guys. And I think my bag is absent today. Right? Yeah, because I gave it to Maverick or, yeah. You always have something. A shock, that's what she had. Okay. Well, this is a pin that you can wear, right? You see it? Got this little thing, and you can stick it on and put it on like that. What's on there? A, little, a red dot. A red dot. Yeah. A red dot. You see that? Red dot. It's not one of those laser pointers. Not one of those kind of red dots. It's just a red dot. I, you probably told me what it means, but I don't know, and that's fine. Yeah, it's a square, a red dot inside of a red square <laughs> on a black field. Isn't that great? It kind of matches your shirt. You've got black and red on your shirt. But I don't know what it means, but it's interesting. I like red, in case nobody's ever noticed I like red. I have a little red car. I got a lot of red shirts. I got a red hat that I wear all the time. I like red. It's a good color. It's a cheerful, happy color. And it's one of the colors of this season of the year. And, and for patriots. Right, and for the patriots, yeah. But you see, we've got, like up there, we've got the red garland thing and red ornaments. And, oh, and up there. The yeah. We've got all kinds of red around it. At Christmas time, it's a fun color. And it's a nice color because it's so bright. Some people are even wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We got a bunch of people wearing red. I didn't wear my red today. You got red shoes even. My gosh. I haven't quite gotten brave enough to wear red shoes. I got a pair of red socks, though. Well, yeah. Red yeah. Red yeah. Red, red coats. And, yeah. So red's a good color. It's a nice color. But, you know, red also has some other meanings, right? Have you ever seen on the road? Yeah. Have you ever seen when you're driving and you see this big sign and it's red? It's a stop. Stop. That's right. You want to stop. Red's a good color because it gets our attention. And so that's a good thing. But, you know, we have these cloths up here and they're not red. They're purple. We have purple there. We have red ones too, but we put purple ones out at Christmas time because we also need to remember that purple is an important color. That's the color of royalty. Kings and queens wear purple because that's a royal color. And Jesus came to be our king and our Lord. And so we remember him with purple cloths. But we also remember him with red because red reminds us that when he died, he shed his blood for us so that we could have eternal life forever with him in heaven. Uh, you know yep. yep, and so red is, yeah, red is a good color to have because it reminds us of all kinds of things. So let's have a prayer and we'll remember a good red color. Gracious God, thank you for all of the colors, but especially this time of year, thank you for red that reminds us of the blood that Jesus shed that reminds us that we should be cheerful and happy because red is such a happy color. And sometimes it reminds us to be careful, to stop and not be in danger. And we also thank you for purple because that reminds us that Jesus is our king. And he's our king because he came to shed his blood so that we can all live. We thank you for that and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Um, so... I'll leave the bag with Maverick and Madison as long as we get them back next week or sometime and we'll figure it out from there. So you guys go grab your candy and we'll hand the bag out next time, okay?
this way. Yeah, don't don't try to leap up on there. You know, I I don't think I could, Ellen K. <laughs> so let's not even find out, okay? We're going to read from Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which they were just as they had been told. Thank you, Ellen Kay. So we're continuing our Advent uh, series, Rediscover Christmas, Good News in Troubled Times. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed doing the research on this and studying because these are basic things that sometimes we forget about. We, we forget about how we can rediscover Christmas, how important it is. And this week, we're going to talk about finding peace in our struggles. But remember, uh, last week was hope in our uncertain times. We talked about how we can have hope even when we're not certain about anything in the world because we can be certain about Jesus Christ. This week will be peace Next week, we'll talk about joy in our discouragements and then love in our differences as we wrap up. And I hope that you can continue to join us and and, uh, be able to see these. They'll they'll also be archived on our Facebook page so you can locate them if you miss one. Uh, So today, we talk about the shalom, the peace of Jesus. And I'm, I'll, I'll use the words interchangeably somewhat during the early parts of this message, shalom and peace. But we'll unpack that a little bit later on. Because shalom is usually translated as peace, but it's more, so much more. And so when you see peace in the Bible, usually it's shalom that is the word that they have used. And it, uh, it gives us so much more to know. So peace at Christmas time. It's a wonderful thought. It's, a, it's one of those things that we always you know, talk about, Christmas peace and all of that. Um, you know, I remember one of my favorite things growing up was watching the Charlie Brown Christmas special, where Charlie Brown gets duped into directing this Christmas program that nobody really wants to do and nobody wants to listen to him And they're always busy dancing. You know, Schroeder's playing some fancy music and they're all dancing. And he can't get anybody's attention. And they finally tell him to go somewhere and get a Christmas tree, right? You remember the story. And he goes off and he gets this little bedraggled tree. It's like one stick. And it leans over and they put an ornament on it and it nearly tips the tree over. And everybody is harassing Charlie Brown for picking this stupid tree and he finally just loses it and he says can anybody tell me the real meaning of Christmas and of course Linus does walks out to the middle of the platform and says lights please and then begins to go through the reading that Ellen Kay just read for us 
And he finishes a little sooner. He says, for you, to you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's what Christmas is all about. This event that took place thousands of years ago. This event that has changed the entire world. Even the world that doesn't believe that Christ is the Messiah has been changed by this. And it's all down to the shepherds. The shepherds out watching their flocks at night. Now, you know, throughout the Old Testament, we read that the the forefathers and mothers of the people of Israel were shepherds. That was what they did. They wandered in the wilderness with their flocks and took care of sheep. Well, by the time that this gospel is written and the story happens, there were still some shepherds that were pretty prosperous and well-known, but the guys that worked the overnight shift, they weren't. You know, there were people that were lower on the social stratus than the shepherds that worked overnight, but not many. Tax collectors and prostitutes probably, and then shepherds, I don't know. They were not the elite, not in the least. They just went out and watched the sheep and probably snoozed a little bit and didn't watch the sheep, and that was what they did. And every night was pretty much the same, unless maybe they had a wolf come in or a bear or a lion or something come in and try to take their sheep. Then it got a little exciting, but usually it was pretty boring. But this particular night, it was not going to stay boring. They had an angel choir show up and they told them the story and then they sang glory to God in the highest and earth peace, goodwill to men, peace. They came and told the shepherds that peace was going to be restored and the shepherds were the first to hear about it. The shepherds. There they sat and listened and heard what the angel said. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news, which will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, is a, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The good news, and it goes on to have the peace on earth song being sung. This is great news And the shepherds are the first ones to hear it. And I always thought that was kind of weird, right? Why were the shepherds the first ones to hear it? Why wasn't it, you know, wise men or kings or rabbis or priests or somebody really important? But this is a new era. This is a new time. And God's peace is there for all. And God's peace is not just reserved for those that are smart and wise and and learned and deep thinkers. It's for everyone, for shepherds. And I also think it's appropriate because where did they go to see the baby? They didn't go to a, a palace. They didn't even go to a really nice middle class home if there was such a thing back then. No. They ended up in a manger. Why were shepherds called? Because God knew there was going to be some hard work to be done. And shepherds understood hard work. I I used to like watching dirty jobs every once in a while, and I think they should have gotten a hold of some shepherds from back in Christ's time because they had dirty jobs. I mean, the sheep weren't the smartest things in the world. They'd get lost. They'd get in the brambles. They'd walk into giant mud puddles, and somebody's got to get them out because they can't figure out how to do it. They're up all night. They're walking in miserable places, hot, cold. It didn't matter. They had to be out there with the sheep because the sheep needed to eat, and they needed somebody to take care of them. And God knew there was hard work ahead. Not the kind of work that uh, those that had never gotten their hands dirty or never had had a cut or a bruise because of the work they did, he knew. And so he sent the shepherds, ragtag, dirty-handed bunch, 
the first ones to hear the good news of the gospel, of the peace that was returning. And they went there to the manger, and it says then, after they saw what they had seen, they went out and they told the story. These are the first ones to preach the gospel. Shepherds. Night-working shepherds. Not just shepherds, but the ones that pulled the nasty duty for whatever reason. They were the ones that went to tell the good news. Peace was being restored. A peace that was different. A peace that didn't mean there wasn't trouble, but a peace that only God can give. And that peace came to the lowest of the low, but that peace is always there for us too in the midst of our storms. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a hurricane. I never have. There were a few days up in North Dakota when it felt like a hurricane. There have been a few days around here that it's felt like a hurricane, but it wasn't. Hurricanes are terrifying things. You know, a tornado is terrible, but it's here and it's gone. Hurricanes stay, they last, and they cause other crazy weather phenomena. But they have one thing that happens in them. There is a time when the storm gets into where it's going, and there's a part of it called the eye of the storm. It's a picture of the actual eye of a, a hurricane. Blue skies up above, everything looks just beautiful, except for the trees that you see that are knocked down and uh, torn up. And in the eye of that storm, the breeze, the wind almost stops. And it's an eerie kind of a calm that is just there. You don't have any fear because there's nothing to fear. But the storm will continue. I, you know, in our lives, we have storms all the time, stormy lives, family problems, deaths, illnesses, you name it. We have storms that come. And there are times when we feel like we are in the eye of the storm. But when we're in God's care, when we're in God's care, we don't need to worry about the eye of the storm passing and having the storm start again. God will protect us in that storm. But maybe, maybe right now, we're in a storm. Craziness, Christmas time, right? Everybody is busy. We gotta go shopping, we gotta get the kids to this, we gotta buy presents, we've gotta go and do and, and be here and be there and we're always late and we're always a little bit behind. We were feeling a little bit like that with our, our float on Friday. <laughs> we went, oh my gosh, we only got like this light. And, just seemed rushed and hurried. Christmas time has become that for so many people. Just a time of running and, and pa panic and, and craziness. And this is what we always think of when we think of Christmas. This beautiful, peaceful scene. This little manger out in the center and, and you know, and the shepherds and their sheep and the star and the wise men coming and, and everything is serene and beautiful. Everything is peaceful, right? Christmas is a time of peacefulness. Well, remember how, Jesus, how Joseph and Mary spent the Christmas holidays? Walking from the town they lived in to Bethlehem, about a three or four day journey, walking, riding the donkey through nasty country, through wild country, up and down hills that were nearly mountains. That's how they spent their lead up to Christmas. And then when they got to where they were going, the place was packed with people. You know, he hadn't called ahead. He hadn't gone on uh, room, Rooms R Us or whatever they have to, to book rooms, booking.com. There was none of that stuff. He had no place to stay. And remember, Mary, as the old uh, King James Version says, was great with child. I'm sure she didn't think it was so great, especially riding on a donkey for three or four days or walking, N neither of which sound like a good option. And now they're in a strange town. They, they probably know somebody there, but to find them, to see where they are, and they don't have a place to stay, and they end up in a barn, stayed in a barn. First child born in a barn. 
parents couldn't ever say if he left the door open, well, were you born in a barn? He was. And there they, there the, ch- the child Christ was born and bedded down for his first night in a feed bunk with some blankets and cloths wrapped around him. Yeah, not real peaceful Christmas for them either. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not the way things are supposed to be, but it is. It is. They found peace in the midst of things that were not peaceful, that were not pleasant. I really enjoy the end of that little passage that uh, Ellen Kay read for us. It says that Mary treasured up all of these things and kept them in her heart. Mary found peace. I don't know whether Joseph did, but Mary did. She knew the peace of God that night. So peace is there for us in the storm, and peace is there in spite of our circumstances. This is a, a passage that I love. I, uh, I actually turn to it quite regularly in Philippians. And it's the one that talks about rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll say rejoice as Paul is writing to the, the people in, you know, in, uh, in Philippi. He's writing to them from prison, likely chained to a Roman guard, maybe two of them because he was a dangerous criminal or something. But he's writing to them about rejoicing, about having joy, about having a wonderful, wonderful attitude toward life. And he says, he goes on and he says, uh, you know, so be not to, to not be anxious, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And there's the one I like. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Paul knew that peace. He found peace wherever he was. It didn't matter his circumstances. One place he says, I've learned how to have plenty. I've learned how to be hungry. And I've learned how to be without. And I've learned all of these things. And I've learned in all of these things to give thanks to God. I have found the way to be content no matter what. Because he had the peace of God that passes understanding. That's that song we used to sing in Sunday school. I got the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. It's a real thing. It's not just something that somebody made up to make a song about. It's a real thing. Peace that goes beyond our understanding or the world's understanding. Peace in Jesus Christ. And that takes us to this. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is peace. Peace is a person. It's Jesus, the Prince of Peace. In Isaiah it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I love that that's the end. It's like that's the culmination. He's all of those things, but over all of that, he's the Prince of Peace. Jesus is our peace. Not our lack of problems, not any of those things, but he is our peace. And so that takes me back to shalom. Shalom. What is shalom? You may have heard it. Uh, Our Jewish brothers and sisters still use this word as a greeting, as a farewell. It's a very common word. When they're celebrating the Sabbath, Shabbat, they say shalom Shabbat. Peaceful Sabbath, a restful Sabbath, a wonderful Sabbath. Because shalom means well-being, it means completeness, it means prosperity, it means wholeness, it means wealth, it means health, it means safety, harmony with God. And, And real honestly, it could go on. It could go on and on and on. And so the translators, instead of trying to figure out which word fit, Use peace. Because really, peace does encompass all of those things. 
If you have wholeness and well-being and, and completeness and prosperity and health and, and safety and harmony with God and others, you're at peace. And that's what shalom is all about. Peace that goes beyond just simple not problems. Goes to a full wholeness, a, a feeling of being right with God and with the world. It's a wonderful blessing. And we ought to use it more. Shalom. Shalom to you. So Jesus says to us in Matthew, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and I, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Jesus is offering us shalom. Shalom, a place to come and unburden ourselves, a place to come and learn from him and learn to be gentle and humble and learn to do what Jesus has called us to do in concert with him. Shalom. Shalom comes to us. So we may have storms in our lives that cause us problems. We may be tossed on the wild sea of life that just feels like our boat's about to be swamped and we're about to go under. But Jesus can give us that calm of shalom, that peaceful feeling that says, we are all right. Peace is not the absence of trouble but the presence of Christ. Christ is peace. Not the troubles around us, not the problems, but Christ, his presence, gives us that peace. And so, as Paul wrote to the folks in Thessalonica, and now may the Lord of peace, the Lord of shalom himself, give you shalom at all times, and in every way, the Lord be with you all of you. Amen. And amen. Next week, as I said, we'll look for joy. Choose joy over discouragement. That'll be our topic next time. All right. Let's go to uh, our time of prayer as we prepare our hearts and minds to uh, to talk to God and to respond to him and to lead up to our time of Holy Communion. Uh, do we have prayers that we'd like to add to our list? You see the list there and in your bulletins. Uh, please, please look at those. We did, uh, I added one in the bulletin that Ray didn't see because I didn't, I sent it out and then it happened later. Mar Marita passed away and, and so we want to remember her family in our prayers. That funeral will be on Saturday. Uh, come as 10.30, I think, in Benella, and a visitation the evening before at, uh, at Coolers, I think it is. Uh, anyway, keep uh, Marita's family in your prayers. Are there others we want to lift up? Um, Kay Ludwig passed away. Who? Kay Ludwig. Kay Ludwig. Kay Ludwig. Any others? All right. Well, let's uh, then prepare ourselves for this time of prayer with our, our uh, prayer hymn. We'll just uh, go through this one time. His name is wonderful.
before the Lord this day. Let's go to Him in this time of prayer. Gracious God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we come to you day, today with uh, many things in our hearts. Some that cause us to question our peace with you. Help us, Lord, to put our trust in you and know that in you there is true peace in every situation, in every storm, in every circumstance. Lord, let us never doubt that you are peace. Help us to carry that peace into the world to be your hands as we serve you and to lift all of those that are on our hearts this day in prayer. We lift up the prayers for all of the people on our prayer list we think uh, especially of Kay Ludwig's family and Marita, Marshall, Marita uh, Martin's family as they deal with their, the passing of their loved ones. Lord, we pray for your strength and courage to surround them. We pray that you will bless all of those that we list in our prayer list. We also pray that you will bless all of those who faithfully give to a our church's needs as they bring their tithes and offerings into the, into the storehouse so that your work can continue. Lord, we bless all of those that give and the gifts that they give. May each one of them find a place and a purpose in your kingdom as it comes on this earth. And so, Lord, we lift up our prayers to you this day as we share together in the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's take time to prepare our hearts and minds to share together in this meal that our Lord established for us that last night that he was here on this earth with his disciples. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. But when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind. He set at liberty those who were oppressed to announce that the time had come which you would save your people. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The Lord Jesus promised when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word in the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, on that same evening when the supper had ended, he took the cup. 
Again he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you like in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast with him at his heavenly banquet table. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I could have my servers and my accompanists come. We'll call them and then we will be ready to serve all of you also. Hazel. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The table is set and the meal is prepared. All who are here are welcome to come and commune at the Lord's table. Please come and join us as we offer you his body and blood.
ministry of the body of Christ. Pray the body of Christ. Rail on the body of Christ. Lisa, the body of Christ. Scott, the body of Christ. As we close our time of worship together, let's uh, turn together and join in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Sam with me if you're able as we sing together.